Good morning, Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave. We're a few minutes late this morning. There was a big accident on the highway and slowed everybody down so we couldn't get here when we needed to be here to get set up. But we are here now and uh, welcome to the MagnaWave office hours. We try to come to you every Tuesday morning at nine o'clock Eastern time to uh, discuss with you uh, any questions you may have about PEMF, PEMF wellness, MagnaWave, machines, training, uh, devices, all, any questions that a person may have with regard to PEMF, we would like to come here and answer those questions for you so you can be up to speed totally when you learn about PEMF for health and wellness. So I'm glad to be here this morning and I want to thank you uh, for joining us. If you'd like to talk to me uh, and ask a question and have a conversation, just simply text your name to 502-599-9722. I believe that's correct. I always get that. I got a mental block on that one. 502-599-9722. Got it right. And uh, text me your name. If you text your name uh, and I give you a call and we have a conversation, we'll uh, send you some MagnaWave gear, hat, jacket, shirt, whatever it may be, uh, mug, um, whatever it may be. Uh, we'd like to get you some MagnaWave gear so you can uh, be ready to go. So uh, send me a text and we'll certainly uh, get right back to you. I like doing it uh, that way because it gives us a better conversational form. We can uh, uh, actually we go deeper when we do it that way because we're able to converse back and forth and, and uh, answer the questions as fully as we possibly can. So again, it's 502-599-9722. Text me your name and uh, we'll be happy to get right back to you. Otherwise, you can post your question in the chat box and uh, our crew here will uh, let make sure that we get it up on the screen and get it answered for you. There are some questions that have been uh, tossed around the last few days that I'd be happy to address uh, so we can be up to speed and know what's, uh, know what's going on. Uh, the one question is, they're looking for advice on how to treat the head. People talk about using it for migraines, uh, sense of well-being, depression, uh, PTSD, all of those types of things, and can the PEMF be beneficial in those areas? <clears throat> the person says they always get a zingy feeling uh, anywhere on their head. Uh, I would say, now, with that said, there are people who just, when you get up around the head with any power of PEMF, may be a bit uncomfortable. If that's the case, don't treat the head that way. There is another way to do that, uh, to get at the head and shoulders for those uh, types of issues. But the secret to treating the head is to be very, very, very low on power. Uh, so if you were to put the coil up to your ear and listen to it, it'd be a brrrr, is how the signal would sound, just a very rapid, very low uh, signal. You may not even be able to hear it uh, holding it out a foot or so from your, from your body, but if you put it right up by your ear, you can hear it like that. And quite often when you do that, putting the butterfly over the head or holding a coil on the head, um, that type of speed or that lowness of signal is is what is uh, typically there. Now, if you want to try to turn it up a little bit to experiment, fine. But if you get that discomfort or that zingy feeling that this person was talking about, certainly you don't want to do that and you want to back off uh, a little bit and make sure that it's very low. The other way to do that, and let's say if you're treating migraines, for example, you don't have to actually be up on the head. You could be at the lower part of the skull going into your, into your neck to where you want to treat uh, potentially in that situation with a butterfly with, with a with the butterfly not opened or you could open the butterfly and have the signal going this way another way to do it is to simply place the large loop over the head rest it on the shoulders what I would do is put it behind you and hold it the front of the loop like this so the signal is now going in this direction and so you are really approaching the head. You can go to actually put a little more energy at that point because you're not directly on the skull, but the signal is going this way. So you are in fact treating the head for all of those sense of well-being, uh, headache relief, uh, all of that. So that's one way to approach it. Certainly you can do this where you have the large coil and hold it <clears throat> in, in front of the head or you could put it on a pillow behind you and simply lay your head in the center of the large loop on the pillow as you're uh, relaxing or reclining. 
and approach it from that, that perspective. Certainly when you do that, you can have supply more energy because you're not directly on it. We used to do that a lot of times when, when you talk about treating animals uh, or treating people's feet. If you put the large loop down and someone's feet in the center of the large loop, and that's also a, a solution for the headache. We treat the head area and the feet to gain the benefit of reflexology as we're using the, uh, the coils. But if you set the large loop on the floor and put your feet in the middle of it, you can probably turn your machine all the way up and the person won't feel it because of the size of the area that you're doing. But you're putting a lot of energy into that loop, which is certainly being absorbed by the body and could better do the job. The whole deal, as we've talked about many times, is to supply as much energy as possible comfortably to the person that you're, that you're dealing with. <coughs> and uh, so that's kind of how it shakes out from that perspective. So certainly uh, you want to be comfortable. That is always the key. So if a lot of, a lot of person, a lot of myself, for example, in my age when I was a child, a lot of metal fillings. And so for me to put the coil right up to my face irritates my fillings to a point. So it's more rapidly uncomfortable for me to do it that way. So I just simply hold it out a little bit or turn it down if I'm working, if I have a sinus condition I want to approach uh, with the coil and the pulsing on the, onto my face and head, I, I can do it like that. But you control it so it's comfortable. So that's the key, as much energy as possible in a comfortable fashion. So uh, I hope that helps and a very good question. Let me see, um, um, have a practice customer looking for a practitioner in the Finley, uh, Lima, Ohio area. If you're new uh, to PEMF and you're looking uh, for someone near you who can provide services to you, certainly on the MagnaWave site you can go in, go to where it says find a practitioner or treatments on the site, click the button, put in your information and you will receive uh, a list of the practitioners that are near you and, and with phone numbers that you can call them and the closest practitioner will receive your information so they can reach out to you and potentially set up an appointment. Uh, if there's no one near you or close by, then there are some other options available to you and one of our representatives uh, may reach out and kind of give you some direction on how to uh, uh, approach that type of situation. So go to MagnaWave. Soon the um, uh, Association of PMF Pre PEMF Practitioners, PEMF Professionals, uh, will be up and running and, and there will be a map of practitioners all over the country regardless of what type of equipment they use but they are PEMF practitioners so you'll be able to go and search and find out a lot more information about the practitioners uh, around you. My position and our position is we want the health and wellness with PEMF to be at the forefront. Uh, in fact a, a term that came to me the other night uh, when I was or the morning when I was early in the morning I wake up quite often and think about things but it's a uh, changing the horizon of PEMF wellness, changing the horizon of health and wellness uh, with PEMF and making it available to people, animals, the, the whole nine yards. So anyway, there's going to be a lot of places for you to, to get your answers and, and find practitioners who would uh, be near you. Another question is, this is regard to the uh, equine area, how does the machine work on a horse with ring bone? Well, certainly, uh, ring bone is a, is a condition where you get a rotation of the of the bones in the foot of the horse, and and they can cause certainly cause problems. And what we need is improved circulation to the area, and the and the device will certainly aid in the circulation and the oxygenation to the area to the foot area of the of the horse where you're having that that type of situation. The protocol would be to uh, treat daily if possible, and of course we go back to the typical protocol is you treat as long as function continues to improve and then once you hit a plateau you treat as often as necessary to maintain the function of the plateau that you have achieved. So uh, a quick recommendation would be to take a situation like that and really this applies for joint pain and a lot of different issues in people and animals is you would treat, uh, I would recommend treat for a period of time uh, 10 to 15 minutes on a particular area for five to seven days in a row and then drop back and see how things hold. I always talk about how long 
does it hold? How, do, how long does it stay well <coughs> or in good, excuse my cough, and, and treat it like that and then take a look at how you need to go. If it's, if it's still coming along and you need to treat more often, then do that. But you want to certainly be within the guidelines of your time and your expense and, and so on and so forth. So that'd be my recommendation. Treat the ring bone uh, daily, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, five, to day, five to seven days, see how the, the animal is responding and then decide how you would go forward and certainly be in communication with the veterinarian in charge of that particular animal so you stay within the guidelines uh, that they would uh, prescribe and, and uh, recommend. Okay, let's see, uh, no other questions for conversations. Remember, if you give me a call uh, or give me a text so I can call you, the reason I do that is so we don't have people stacking up on the phone trying to get in. So if you just send me a text, I'll be happy to give you a call back and we'll get you some uh, MagnaWave gear. Any questions up, Brad, at this point that we need to take a look at? Uh, working on a client with Parkinson's, I have the Semi Pro machine. Do you have any suggestions for treatments? Sure, Danielle. Uh, Parkinson's is a type of thing that what we get in many cases is a relief of the troubling symptoms that someone is experiencing and by simply treating the body and going over it. Now, a lot of times with Parkinson's, they have areas of tremors. You can treat that. You can treat the overall body by simply being on the mat and treating the body to help the blood flow, to help the blood oxygenation. So the body's elements, the blood, and, and can better do its job to help relieve some of those situations. And then certainly if there is a focused area where the person is having problems, treat that area to help it further enhance and energize that particular area of the body. We're going to have some speakers coming to MagnaCon um, who have dealt with Parkinson's for a few years, and they're going to put on a presentation and talk about what they have done, how they have done it, and how they have maintained. Uh, in this particular situation, they have been able to reduce the medication. A lot of times with Parkinson's, the medications that people take continue to increase as the symptoms continue to develop and become more troublesome. In this case, uh, the gentleman's actually been able to go back to work and to, uh, to live a fuller, uh, happier life. And actually the medication has not increased, but it has been able to decrease to some degree. So they will be speaking at, at MagnaCon, the name slips my uh, right now, but we'll get that here in a minute and uh, uh, talk about it. But certainly, uh, it's a reason to come to MagnaCon. A lot of good speakers at MagnaCon uh, talking about animals and people and machines and just a lot of different ways to approach PEMF for health and wellness and how MagnaWave uh, approaches the health and wellness uh, aspect. Uh, utilizing PEMF. So we will fully address the Parkinson's and how people have used uh, this. You can go to the go to the uh, Facebook page. Uh, it is um, Magdaway, let's see, it's, it's PEMF. Professionals.com? No, no, not PEMF Professionals, but the uh, Magnawave group. It's the oh. uh, Magnawave International Education and Resources page, that's it. The MagnaWave Professional uh, Education and Resources page on Facebook, group on Facebook, and you can search. You can go into that particular group and search for any topic that you want to take a look at and what people have done and how it MagnaWave has been used in those types of indications. Uh, it's up on the screen, so you can take a look at that uh, and, and go visit that group. The page, our MagnaWave page, of course, corporate page provides information every day, but you can't search it. So you can go to the group and you can search whatever indication you're looking to find some information about. And then certainly you can go to the AOPP page. It's pmfprofessionals.com and search for studies or anything that you might be uh, looking to learn more about. So um, there you go. Any other questions, uh, Brad, that we take a look at? Okay, good. Another question here that someone... It was Karen Ainsworth. Karen Ainsworth. Karen Ainsworth, a MagnaWave practitioner. Her husband suffers uh, from Parkinson's, and they're going to come. Karen and her husband, Karen Ainsworth, is going to be at MagnaCom, put on a presentation about what they have done and how they've utilized PEMF, MagnaWave PEMF therapy for his health and wellness in his, uh, trans in his uh, fighting uh, Parkinson's in his life. So we're looking forward to that. If you want to know more about MagnaCon, go to the MagnaWave PEMF website and take a look <clears throat> and 
pull up MagnaCon and you learn all about uh, what we're going to be doing at that event. Okay, let's see. My elderly dog was recently diagnosed with, with a mass in his nostril after he was having a bloody nose. I want to use my semi to try to reduce the inflammation and hopefully the mass size, but I'm concerned that it may cause the bleeding to return. What you recommend? If it is not bleeding, it will not cause bleeding. There's, we don't increase pressure, uh, we don't increase blood pressure uh, in the body. We improve blood flow. And so to treat the area if it's not actively bleeding should not cause anything to happen there to have bleeding to occur. So you can, you can approach it. Now, if it is very sensitive and trying to bleed, we always say wait till how bleeding has stopped. If you were to treat the muzzle uh, and the nose uh, of the dog and you, and you get a little bleeding, then wait. Let it kind of heal up as much as possible so when you treat it, it won't have that happen. But as a rule, if the bleeding is not there, if the bleeding is stopped or as a standard guideline, you can treat the area and it will not force bleeding to occur or to start again. And so you will hopefully be able to use your machine. I would use it on a low setting, certainly at the beginning and, and just a little longer and then perhaps move up to medium, but treat that area and it will, should be available to ease and reduce the inflammation in the area to help resolve the issue uh, to your comfort level that you're looking for. Great question and uh, we always like to and that's the same not just on a dog that's the same on a horse or the same on a person. If you have some a, a cut or a bruise once the uh, something that is bleeding whether you maybe have some surgery or whatever it may be, once the bleeding is controlled and stopped, then there's no fear. What happens is by improving the blood flow and the viscosity of the blood, if you are bleeding and you treat, you're simply gonna allow the blood to flow more freely. And we don't wanna do that. So if there's bleeding, don't treat. If bleeding is controlled and everything is controlled from that perspective, then to treat typically is not an issue uh, that you need to deal with. Certainly consult your doctor, understand what you're doing. They have their understanding of what's going on and can, can guide you uh, appropriately. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Any experience with prostate cancer? Just looking for the best treatment plan. I've had my own issues with prostate. Uh, I didn't, I did not, when they did the biopsy, what was there was dead and benign. Uh, but I can tell you that all of my family members, close family members, have had prostate surgery and, and removal and in issues from the cancer side. Uh, from my perspective, when it, and I knew it was probably going to come up at some point in time in my life, and it did. I went for my physical. The doc says, yeah, your PSA is high. They did the physical exam, and yeah, the inflammation is there. They did an ultrasound. Mm, I don't like what I'm seeing. We did an MRI. They didn't like what they were seeing. We scheduled a, a biopsy, which was scheduled eight weeks uh, further out, and I began as soon as this conversation started, before the first ultrasound or before the first MRI, I began treating myself daily. My routine, I sat on the coil, whether I sat on the paddle, I sat on the butterfly, I sat on the large loop, I also approached it from the top uh, of my abdomen to a to treat downward and then upward <clears throat> on the area every day for 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes twice a day, uh, all through this process. And when they did the biopsy, uh, it came back, as I said, dead and benign. And I have continued, this is three years ago now, I have continued to treat myself regularly, daily. Uh, I sit on uh, a sit or lay on a coil or a mat to treat that area of my body and everything, uh, my last physical was in October um, before we headed on our southern swing of the MagnaWave Express and uh, the doctor said everything's fine. Uh, my PSA still a little high, I mean in, for my age, I'm 70 years old, just turned 70, uh, that's, that's an issue that we deal with but we monitor it twice a year. He's very happy with how things are going at this point and, and so that is, the, that is a recommendation. We have had people that have used the device uh, who are suffering from prostate cancer and they have been able to help control 
control the inflammation, to help control the oxygenation, oxygenation in the area, and we've seen some very favorable results in that area. Certainly, precaution uh, to treat yourself, understanding that in men, that's an issue that we all face as we age, so preemptive treatment I would certainly recommend. Uh, in my case, everything is good, but I continue uh, to work with it. I continue to take uh, HydroWave water uh, daily uh, to treat it and, and uh, kind of got away from it here a little bit, but I do ozone treatments at least twice a week, uh, insufflation treatments with ozone. It doesn't hurt to have all these complementary methods together uh, to help your body. but. Uh, the results of sitting on the coil for prostate issues have been very functional and, and uh, we've seen some uh, good, uh, happy people as a result of using this health and wellness PEMF therapy to try to enhance their body's operation to taking care of, its, taking care of itself. Okay, let's see if there's any other questions uh, at this point. Oh, we do have a uh, call here. Let's do this one and see what we get. Okay, here we go. Hello? Chris? Yes? Good morning, this is Pat Ziemer. Hi Pat, how are you? I'm great. You have a question? Yeah, I had a question. Um, I have a 77-year-old patient who has hip pain, mm -hmm. and I was wondering how long to, he's going to need a hip replacement, but um, how long to treat a hip, and I have the max, and how long, and how many times a week. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I would treat the hip area. There's a couple of ways to do that. You could certainly take the large loop and kind of wrap it around the hip, like if you were going to put it over the shoulder like this. You simply kind of sit on it and wrap it around the front of the hip. I would treat the area that okay. way. You could certainly put the leg into the loop and then pull it all the way up to the hip area uh, and treat. Okay. Basically, you're coming up the, the, the leg into the hip area at that point. If it's very focused on one area of the hip where he's feeling his pain, you could put the butterfly or the paddle right on that area and treat directly. Okay. Treatment time okay. would be okay. all 10 to 15 minutes potentially at a comfortable setting. You want them to feel okay. it, but you want it to be comfortable. And a man, 77 years old, a uh, situation that, you know, how they react to it if they've never experienced the therapy before, they got to have kind of get used to it first. But a lot of times okay. a, a guy will say to you, oh, that's good, I can take that. Uh, or that's good, I, I can deal with that. If someone says to me, I can take it, I turn it down. Because okay. what they're telling okay. me is, I, I, yeah, I'm feeling it, but I can, I'm strong, I, I can take it, you know. It, and what I say is, no, I'm looking for comfort, so I'll turn it down. Is that good? Yes, that's good. That's comfortable. That's what you want. Okay. Okay. And okay. as tr treatment times, I would certainly right out of the box try to treat him uh, five to seven days in a row. Uh, maybe building okay. building with your intensity, starting very low, let him experience it, let it go, and then and then build the intensity a little bit as you go, and then see how he okay. feels. Quite often, if you have a moderate type of setting, uh, they'll feel some relief immediately. Uh, Ninety percent of the time, okay. we have people feel that type of relief immediately, and then you can build on that. So that'd be my recommendation. Okay, excellent. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, now be sure to uh, send your imp your information to support at magnawavepemf.com, and we'll get you some gear. Okay, sounds Thanks. good. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Bye bye. Uh -huh, sure, sure. Bye bye. Okay, great question. Uh, how to deal with uh, hip pain and how you would approach it? You know, it, it it's interesting, and I was talking about that when you when you get a. a, a more often than not, if we're treating someone for the first time uh, and you put it on their back and they feel it through their entire gut area, they feel everything moving, that can be a, a, a sensation that you need to get used to. So some people at first, oh my gosh, what's going on? Well, and I'm not talking about turning it too high, but you will feel it. As you begin to move up the intensity, you will feel the movement through the entire body and people need to get comfortable with that. But as you put it on a specific area, and as I was referring to men, is uh, more often than, than the women, but they'll put it on there and you begin to turn it up and yeah, oh, that, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, yeah, okay, yeah, a little more and then all of a sudden, how's that? Oh, I, I can take it, turn it down.
because yeah they can take it but they don't need that much energy uh, in the area this is like a deep tissue massage we're going all the way into the area and you know when you receive a deep tissue massage quite often you're sore after the massage but then the next day you feel better we can do the same thing but we don't need to because we can penetrate all the way in without the pressure and without the heavy use like you get on a deep tissue massage so just keep that in mind when you're receiving a treatment you don't need to be knocked out of the chair. You just need to enjoy what's happening and feel the good vibe that it's putting into your body, the vibration of the body uh, being utilized with the PEMF signal that we're, that we're delivering is kind of what you're, what you're looking for. Okay, any other questions? Yes. I have a question that came to me, actually. Can you, uh, can you describe how to treat laminitis in horses? this time of year? Sure. Well, laminitis is a situation that occurs basically where the, the hoof of the horse and the, and the foot area begins to delaminate, come apart. Uh, if you've seen wood, if you've seen a lot of the new woods that they use today, compressed wood and all this kind of stuff, if it gets wet, it begins just to separate and come apart. Well, that's what happens with laminitis. In a, in a horse's foot is is the the core of the area the 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 the, the wall and and all the parts of the hoof begin to just separate come apart and the best way to treat that is to improve the circulation improve the oxygenation when it begins to come apart there's pain there's inflammation there's all that going on which further exacerbates the problem so what we need to do is improve the circulation, improve the blood flow, improve the oxygenation to the area to allow the, the cells to better do their job in the area to keep the cell wall, uh, the, the hoof wall, the, 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 the frog and all the areas of the hoof healthy as can be and so they again the body can better do its job to keep that area healthy and, and um, healing properly. Now what sometimes happens you know, you, and, and the story that I tell, and I apologize if you've heard this a hundred times, is that if you go to the state fair and you wear the wrong shoes and you're walking around all day or the art fair, wherever you happen to go, by the end of the day, your hip hurts, your neck hurts, everything, you're walking crooked because you wore the wrong shoes. And, and so you can't do anything about it. You treat all those areas that are hurting, but you got to change your shoes. Well, to, to that end of laminitis, and this is the same, same, same deal in dogs that are suffering from hip dysplasia and people who are having hip problems. We, we carry ourselves differently, but in a horse with laminitis, if you know you got a laminitic issue on, let's say, the right foot or the right hoof, you want to also be treating the left because they'll start putting all their pressure on the left to support and relieve the one that's bothering them and bingo you can have the same type of thing because of the pressure because of the weight begin to develop in the other foot same thing on people you don't just change one shoe you change both shoes if you got shoes that aren't comfortable and and don't work and and same thing in a dog with with hip dysplasia is you want to make sure you're treating both hips to help the, the dog be able to carry himself properly and to have the relief that they so desperately want you know when they're not feeling good and you want to do things to help them feel better to achieve better health and uh, and wellness in your animals uh, that we're that we're dealing with so uh, that's the situation with with uh, laminitis uh, and if you have a horse that's having some issues and the, and the, the vet says, you know, we, we want to be careful not to create a laminitic or have a laminitis type situation to develop, that's the best time to be preemptive, to be treating the horse's legs and feet so they have good circulation, so they main, maintain good health in those areas so the horse can better help its body heal itself and take care of itself. Great question, Chris. Thank you. Anything else, Brad? Any other questions that we uh, need to take a look at here? Uh, I, uh, oh, yes. Um, I've seen that MagnaWave is FDA approved for bone growth and migraines. Anything else? Okay, need to be clear here. MagnaWave is not FDA approved at this point. We are in the process of some of our machines in the final stages uh, of approaching uh, FDA approval. We are uh, in the final stages of CE. We basically received our CE approval in Europe, but they have to approve our factory uh, to finalize that situation. So we are a CE medical device approved for use by people in Europe and Canada, South America, places that recognize 
recognize the CE, which is the out of the United States designation for FDA. Uh, MagnaWave is doing some studies to submit to the FDA for FDA approval. The modality, the PEMF modality, is approved for migraines and bone bone healing and, and so forth. So to use the device, that, can you put that back up so I can see the last part of her question? Um, migraines approved for bone growth and migraines, anything else? Great question. So that's where it is the modality. The modality is approved for incontinence in women. Uh, that doesn't mean that it won't work for incontinence in men. So, but there is a device uh, that is specifically designed that a woman can sit on. It's basically a large cushion with PMF coils in the cushion that they can sit on and it massages the area of the body where they're having some issues with PMF signals and <clears throat> they see some good relief. <clears throat> We experience the same thing utilizing uh, some of our type of equipment to treat the areas, whether you treat from above the abdomen or below to help with the incontinence thing. So, but the, the modality, PM of modality for migraines, for uh, autism, for uh, TMJ issues, uh, certainly for incontinence. Uh, there's a new device out that it's called the Optune for treating uh, glioblastoma brain tumors. It's a cap that they wear uh, with PMF coils throughout and they wear it all day uh, or almost full time to help uh, the, to slow down the growth or retard the growth of or, or the whole thing shrink the shrink the tumors uh, with better blood flow and oxygenation to the body. So there's a lot of different areas where PEMF is currently approved. Uh, uh, certainly, bone uh, non-union fractures. Uh, there is a specific device. Uh, I met them uh, just over the Christmas holiday. The people that actually developed that particular device for non-union fractures. So that's how it, how it is utilized. That, that means the, the, the therapy, the, the PEMF therapy, has been shown to be very beneficial for normal fracture healing and uh, growth of, of bone. We have a video that uh, Dr. Amanda and Verlinda presented last year at MagnaCon. Come join us at MagnaCon. A lot of good information going on there where they showed uh, Verlinda's horse, Amiga, that was severely injured. Uh, the vet Everybody, uh, Verlinda's father is a vet, everybody said, put this horse down. This isn't going to work. You're not going to regrow that bone. You're not going to heal that foot. And they went into a very direct process. I believe the video may be on the, uh, is on our website, but to where they went through this process over a four or five month period of time and the horse uh, when it was finished was was wonderful and comfortable and and uh, and the situation it was, it's just an incredible video if you haven't seen it go watch it uh, to talk about bone healing and and uh, energy enhancement of the bone healing process with MagnaWave PEMF uh, to be used so there's hope that answers your question with some areas that uh, the FDA wise and and where things are going with this type of therapy. Uh, PEMF really, MagnaWave and PEMF really, we are expanding the horizons of health and wellness of uh, how it's utilized. Around the world and people, well, how come I don't know about it? How come we haven't heard about this therapy, this, this great thing that you're talking about? In other countries, uh, PEMF is, a, is an accepted, understood form of medicine. In the United States, uh, 100 years ago or 150 years ago, the AMA basically took several areas out of what they considered to be mainline medicine, uh, massage, acupuncture, electromagnetic therapies. Uh, in fact, uh, um, I'm getting it, Palmer, uh, Dr. Palmer, I believe that's correct, at the Palmer School of Chiropractic was actually an energy, and when he started his whole chiropractic movement was an energy, magnetic energy therapist. That's what it's, it was the basis of everything he was doing and, and approaching it from that point. So outside of the country, it, it's very well accepted and used a lot. In the country, uh, even though it's been around for hundreds of years, it is kind of a, people are expanding the horizons on where it fits and how they can use it for their health and wellness. And we're seeing more and more devices uh, all the time uh, where they apply for FDA use and they get to be able to be used in, in, in hospitals and clinics, so on and so forth for specific disease uh, indications that people people experience. So I hope that answers, uh, <clears throat> helps clear that up a little bit. 
If you have any other questions, simply post them on the chat box, or let me see here if anybody has uh, come into the, uh, no, no one else has, <coughs> excuse me, come in to uh, ask a question. It's we've got about 15 minutes here to go, so if you have a question or something you'd like to discuss, just uh, let, let, let me know. Uh, cardiomyopathy, any experience treating cardiomyopathy? Uh, thinking of a smaller home machine followed with intermittent sessions uh, with my Maya. Certainly what we're looking to do is to improve the oxygenation of the blood, to improve the blood flow uh, of the body in general. So many different indications can be improved uh, with the application uh, of this. Certainly when people are having specific problems, and you want to be able to talk to their doctor and see where their doctor is on those types of situations. However, as I was talking earlier, uh, you, you might want to do some research and see what's going on in other countries and other places so you can get a better well-rounded feeling of what's happening And when you have these discussions. It's not unusual to talk to someone and they have not heard of PMF, they don't believe in PEMF or whatever and so they won't they need to be able to to uh, approach that to that end we have a lot of doctors who we work with uh, veterinarians uh, chiropractors uh, medical doctors the whole nine yards of people that do embrace and do understand from an integrative position where this can fit in their uh, method of practice or in the health and wellness of their particular uh, clientele and if they want to talk about it if you're talking with with a doctor or a practitioner and they would like to learn some more certainly it's available to them on our website magnawavepmf.com they can go to the AOPP the uh, pmfprofessionals.com or search AOPP and there you can go in there and search for studies that have been done all over the world for very specific specific indications that someone may want to uh, approach or, or handle as they're uh, dealing with various uh, situations. So, kind of gives you some background there. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Um, have, a, have a mare that's on Oxycontin. Is there any special uh, protocol for this? Typically, when we're dealing with, with medications uh, in a horse, for example, <coughs> or even in a person, if they're, if they're taking a medication, you want the medication to get an opportunity to metabolize and get into the system so it can start doing its job that it's prescribed to do. Once that occurs, then and if you want to approach pain or shoulder or hip or whatever in, in association with that, that's fine. If it's being metabolized, the, the function of the improved oxygenation, improved blood flow, will improve the metabolization of what the person or the animal is being given. So our typical rule of thumb or guideline is take the medication, let it assimilate into the body, let it do what it's, start doing what it's supposed to do, then you can go in and treat, because you're not going to change anything. You're not going to enhance uh, what happens with something. You're not going to. You're not going to have. It, it, for example, that when they give you a medication, it's got to pass through the digestive system, and so they're putting more in the medication because they know once it's digested and gets into the liver, gets into the body, we're only going to get 20 or 30 percent of it. If that in some in some cases, and, and maybe with time release, it's designed to get more and 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 so forth. So if if you approach it from the the situation that you want it to be, uh, get you're you're only going to enhance it as it's absorbing potentially. Now that opens up a whole world when you're talking about time release. Well, so same thing. If you take a pill and it's going to affect you right now, once it's metabolized, you're good to do some treatment because you're not going to speed up. The, the time function of that particular thing. So you can do what you're doing because it's going to release some more later while well, you're in, a, in an area that you're, you're okay. And many times it's releasing such minute amounts to be absorbed at that point that you're not going to enhance beyond what would be expected to a point to where it's not what they would want. So certainly always communicate with your veterinarian, with your doctor, with your medical professionals to make sure that what you're doing uh, is not going to <clears throat> get in the way of what they're looking to do with their various medications. <clears throat> okay, uh, any other questions, Brad, to put up? Uh, Everything? Uh, one just, one just, yeah. Did one just come up? 
got a few minutes here, so if you have a question, uh, long-standing pyroformis pain on fentanyl patch for the pain. Treatment recommendation, please. <coughs> well, pain is a source of inflammation. Don't know where the pain is or what they're experiencing it from, but you want to make sure that, that you, again, you're, if they're on a pain patch, you want to make sure that you're not doing something to enhance, maybe give them more of what they're getting that, they, that the doc doesn't want them to have. Can this be beneficial for the area of pain by improved oxygenation and improved blood flow? For sure. But you're dealing with a situation here that someone is under medical care, so you want to make sure that the proper references are made to what's going on. In many cases, they understand what we're doing, and so they will say, yes, you can do this and uh, uh, to help further relief. A lot of things work very well in concert. Uh, concert, that's what concert means. A bunch of different instruments coming together to produce a melody that is very comforting or relaxing or enjoyable to hear. Well, we can be used very well in concert with other modalities and with other types of medications. In many countries, for example, they are now, when they talk about chemotherapy, they're, they're using PEMF at the same time to better improve the blood flow and the blood oxygenation to allow those medications to do a better job at what they're doing. We don't approach that at this point in the United States. Uh, you, again, anytime you have something going on, you want to make sure you're talking with your doctor about what they're doing and how they're using it. But you can go to the uh, MagnaWave International PMF Resources and Education, put in chemotherapy, put in particular terms of disease that you want to learn about how people are utilizing uh, various therapies to help in their health and wellness, and you can find uh, those types of answers that you are, in fact, uh, looking for. Great questions. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, anything else that you that you see? Oh, here we go. Let's see. We got a couple of calls. Let me put it up here. Dial it up. <phone rings> Troy. Come on, Troy, answer your phone. Oh, needs repair done on the Magnaway. Hello, you've reached Troy at Woodrun. Troy at Woodrun. Troy was one of our very uh, Woodrun up in the Chicago area, Hunter Jumper uh, group. Uh, Troy was one of the uh, earlier uh, customers of MagnaWave. In fact, I often tell a story about one of their horses, and we treated the horse, uh, treated the pole of the horse, and, and calmed the horse down, allowed the horse to go perform more like they would like to do. Uh, Troy's question is: He needs some uh, uh, work done on his machine. Troy, all you got to do is call the office 502-742-7868 and um, talk to Lee and we'll get you uh, in line for an RMA to get your machine returned to the uh, factory for maintenance. They've had their machine, I think this might be the first time it's needed any work, uh, and they've had that machine easily for 10 or 12 years uh, that they've been using on their horses at, at Wood Run. Nice to hear from you, Troy, if you're still watching. Uh, hope to catch up again one of these days, maybe at Kentucky or somewhere. Um, getting back on the road here a little bit and uh, look forward to saying hey and uh, visiting with you. Okay, we got another call. Um, let's go, let's see what we got here. All right. Here we go, Suzanne. Maybe Suzanne. See if she answers to. Uh, Hello. Suzanne. Hello. Pa yes. Pat Zemer with MagnaWave. Hi, Pat. Thanks for calling. Yeah. You have a question. Yes. Uh, yes. I have a. Somebody I saw on a group posted that her horse was a kicker. She can't get rid of it. He's like, she's gave him tranks. He's put bale of hay um, behind him and such. So I'm just trying to suggest if the PMF which sort of calm him down and get him to stop kicking like that. Well, certainly uh, the MagnaWave will, is very relaxing. 
and and, mm -hmm. and can calm the horse in many respects to I mean a lot of times you treat horses they're almost asleep I mean they'll drool and their eyes will relax and, and the whole thing so uh, maybe a, a pr people treat their horses for stress before they go to the ring or before they go to the track so to, to treat a horse to calm it down to relax it before going into the trailer could be very beneficial to that particular animal at, to relax it to put it in I would certainly treat the neck and the pole because when they get stressed you know they tense up in the neck they get this this uh, hyperactivity in their pole potentially and that's kind of interesting to go back to Troy who just uh, sent me a message uh, their horse uh, was a, a, a Grand Prix horse and it was a very expensive horse and and the horse would go to the ring and and wouldn't want to perform it was like it was all tensed up and I received a call from the practitioner who was working on the horse and they said here's what we're doing and the horse seems to be fine after the treatments but it goes to the goes to the ring and gets all tensed up and I said are you treating the pole and uh, Steve, Steve says, no, we're not. And I said, treat the pole. Simply put the, co the coil up on the head. You do the same thing in a situation with this particular horse to relax it. Their head will just drop and they'll relax. And so it'll relieve their stress. It'll relieve their tension, which may help the horse as it goes into the trailer uh, for its ride. So that would be my suggestion. And, and I really, Suzanne, I think that, that could be something worth trying. Yes, awesome. I'm going to contact her and suggest that for her. Yeah. So. That would be great. She's tried everything, and yeah, and, and super. And in in concert with what she's doing, this may be very beneficial. I really appreciate the call. Be sure to send your information to support at magnawayfpmf.com. We'll get you some gear. Awesome. Thanks so much, Pat. You have a great day. Uh huh. Same to you. Bye bye. Great question. Uh, really, uh, relaxation is key to about anything that you're doing. So if we can help improve the relaxed state of the body, uh, of the mind, then you can approach a lot of different things differently. I mean, there we talked about depression and PTSD. PMF provides, Magnolia PMF provides a sense of well-being to the body. You can deal with things. You can think things through if you relieve the stress of what's going on. So that's just another way of approaching um, uh, what you're doing and what you're uh, thinking about and dealing with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But great question on could it help a horse? Most assuredly. Relax the stress in the neck and the shoulders and the head. Uh, treat the pole. Relax the horse. He may step in there and realize once he gets going the vibration of the of the uh, excuse me, on, of the trailer may be very relaxing and allow the horse to uh, ride more comfortably. Same thing with the dog. Uh, if you're treating a dog that has anxiety when you get in the car or a cat, relax them help them uh, deal with that uh, stress in their body and it may help everything else uh, be a little bit more comfortable. Okay, we're about out of time. I don't see any other uh, questions at this point. Are there any questions? Did I see one? One just came in. Let's take a look at it here. We're almost... Can you discuss Magnawave's ability to remodel bone, for example, in a fracture uh, versus X? stosis of a bone uh, like ring bone. Uh, in particular, we want to help repair a bone but wouldn't necessarily want to assist in the uh, abnormal calcification of the joints. Uh, what is MagnaWave actually doing when it comes to these very different issues? Well, what MagnaWave is doing is improving the circulation and improving the oxygenation. So if, if, if it's not normal for the body to do this, we're not going to really enhance something that's not normally going on. So uh, when you talk about the, the situation with bone remodeling and bone healing, we've always said, people have always, well, you know, you don't know, can't expect us to remodel bone. But when you go look at the Amiga video and see how that horse's bone came together it, you, and, and in a sense remodeled uh, it, it, and what occurred was incredible what the this therapy was doing by simply allowing pain relief, inflammation reduction, proper oxygenation, healthy cells doing healthy work. And, and so the body is not naturally, it is not naturally going to cause this, something is causing this bad thing to occur. If we make the cells of the body happy and healthy and better to do their job, they're not going to want to do the bad thing. They're going to want to help the good thing. And, and the cellular memory, the cellular function of the body is not to do bad, but to do good. It's outside elements that come in and cause these things to occur. Decreased oxygenation, decreased blood flow allows for inflammation, allows 
allows for disease and inflammation and, and infection to proliferate and, and grow. So that's how those situations go. Watch the Amiga video. Uh, uh, it's on the website. Chris, is where? do you know where it is on the website? I will find it. We'll find it. We'll post it. Uh, go watch that video. It's incredible. Come to MagnaCon because there's just a world of uh, great information that will be shared uh, and learned at the MagnaCon event that we will share throughout the year. So we're out of time. I want to thank you uh, for being with me today. It's always enjoyable to come and share and learn, even though a lot of times it seems to be uh, repetitious. Uh, sometimes you hear something in a different manner and it all of a sudden makes better sense and you understand. It. So, wave on. Help us uh, change to con continue to change the horizon of health and wellness uh, in the world with MagnaWave PMF. Have a great week. If you have questions, send them to us. Uh, wave on for better health. Bye.